Hola, cage fighting connoisseurs. This is Kid Native Bloody Hell. I'm bringing you once again the infamous and patented bathrobe review of UFC 170. I've got the bathrobe on, got the hat on, I'm drinking some hot tea. Looking back on last night's events, I'm going to give you a quick watch now, later, or never breakdowns of each fight. Overall, overall, I'd say you know, watch this, watch this fight card as soon as you can. It wasn't the most stacked fight card going in. But compared to the last couple of events, uh, it delivered better action than we've seen uh, really so far in 2014. I'd have to say, you know, four out of five TKOs on the main card uh, <laughs> beats the crap out of five decisions. Uh, no submissions. Uh, nobody even really came that close to getting a submission, but had uh, five TKOs overall. Tons of decisions on the undercard. Uh, Got some empty speculation as why that may be. None of it makes any sense. Um, well, let's let's start with the overall. Or we've already done the overall. Let's start with the the Facebook uh, fight, UFC Fight Pass card. No longer on fight, Facebook. <laughs> Lightweights Ernest Chavez and Yodena Cedeno. I think we we'll probably skip this one. I don't see any sign that Ernest, the man Titan Chavez, is going to become a, a, a factor of any way, shape, or form in the UFC lightweight division. Cedeno actually I think has more potential, but he has extremely limited grappling until he can he can improve his, his takedown defense and, and ability to stand up. Uh, he's not going to be doing that much in the UFC. Lightweights Eric Koch and Rafael Oliveira. Watch that one now. Eric Koch looks sharp at lightweight. He busted up Oliveira, uh, dropped him with a hard left hand standing, and then followed it up with some vicious ground and pound. Coke looks much better at lightweight than he did at featherweight. 25 years old, as he says, he's no longer a boy. Now he's a man. Beyond warning, lightweight division, there's a man coming after you. And he certainly uh, pasted Oliveira. Now, Oliveira uh, is like, what, one in four in the UFC now? So he's not, he's hardly a world beater, but uh, good to see Coke uh, get, some dis get a decisive win. <clears throat> Watch that one as soon as you can. Flyweight Zach Makovsky and Josh Sampo went to a decision. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't be in a rush to watch that fight, but before uh, Makovsky's next fight, I'd definitely give it a view. A really good display of, of wrestling um, and uh, mixing up striking and, 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 and grappling very well. Sampo was uh, outmatched uh, all the way through, but he put up a very game fight. Uh, Altermain Sterling versus Cody Gibson, uh, two Bantamweights making their UFC debut. A uh, good fight. I would watch this one pretty soon. I, I don't know that it's a must-see immediately, but I would definitely watch it before Sterling or Gibson's next fight. Both of these guys impressed in their debut. Gibson looked good on the wrestling side, and Sterling, uh, you know, he's been compared a lot to John Jones, whom he used to train with back in the day. Now he trains with Matt Serra and Ray Longo. Uh, but uh, Gibson was actually holding his own on the feet, holding his own on the clinch, and those are both areas where Sterling usually dominates. And and Gibson was doing well with the takedowns, but in the third round. <clears throat> It was an extended ground fight, and Sterling showed he clearly has the better jiu-jitsu of the two and was very dominant in the third round. A good performance. It was also cute to hear Matt Serra yelling in the background. You could tell he was proud of his boy uh, coming through with the good jiu-jitsu, uh, proud papa, as it were, um, and that was cool to see. Sarah's just one of those guys that wears his hearts on his sleeve, so it's exciting to see him, uh, hear him yelling his fighter, especially a younger fighter like Sterling. He's a little wet behind the ears uh, through about... Good fight. Look forward to seeing both of those guys again. Uh, and then uh, Bantamweight's Rafael Asuncao versus Pedro Munoz. Uh, Munoz was making his UFC debut. A pretty steep hill to climb. Uh, they, I think they were looking for this to be a showcase for Asuncao, and it wasn't really. I think you can watch this one later. I'd, I'd wait until... I don't know if you ever need to see it. It's right on the edge there. I'd wait until Asuncao's next fight. If he's fighting somebody really tough, you want to see what he struggles with, or if Munoz's uh, next fight is interesting. And give this one a look. Uh, you know, pretty much a, a, a sole a standing affair. Munoz seemed pretty content to, to stand on the feet and lose a striking battle with Osun Cow, but Osun Cow never really paced him. So it's just another one of these long decisions we've been seeing. And then the w women's, women's bantamweight fight that closed out the prelims on Fox Sports 1. Alexis Davis beat Jessica I. Um, uh, man, this is between later and never. Um, Split decision, back and forth, decent action. Nothing really standing out about this fight. Um, Davis looked pretty good. Uh, I thought I won. Brent Brookhouse thought I won. Zane Simon thought I won. I think I think there's a little controversy about the decision, but be that as it, as it may, um, uh, not not a big deal. 
uh, Davis, if Davis uh, gets a title opportunity, which seems unlikely, uh, but she could, the division's not that deep, um, then you might want to watch this fight. But let's get to the main card. This is where the fun stuff really happens. Stephen Thompson versus Robert Whitaker, Battle of Welterweights. Thompson uh, gets a TKO win in the first round. Really fun fight. Uh, I would watch this one as soon as you can. Um, Whitaker's boxing was very effective. Thompson couldn't establish kicking range very well. Whitaker was just walking through his kicks and getting inside and, and hitting Thompson pretty hard. But Thompson, the canny and veteran striker that he is, adjusted, started boxing him back and busted up Whitaker and got the TKO. Um, just a, a real nice display of violence and, and clash of styles. Whitaker's a boxer with a karate base. And Thompson's a kickboxer with a karate base, so, so you can kind of see. But, but, but Thompson fights like a karateka. Whitaker basically fights like a boxer. So it's interesting clash of styles, and, and, and it came out well. And it's only three minutes and 43 seconds long, so you know, you're not going to uh, be deferring gratification very long if you're waiting for that knockout. And then uh, Mike Pyle and TJ Waldberger. I would go ahead and watch this one as soon as you can, too. Another uh, TKO, this time in the third round. I think what this fight shows is a display of grit. Waldberger, strike, strike, like Zane Simon said on our sixth round show last night, it's always surprising to see how well Waldberger strikes. He just doesn't have killer power, but he's competent uh, on the feet. Pyle is also competent on the feet. And then uh, on the ground, Pyle just owned the kid, and Waldberger's the one who's you know the submission king, but it showed you know Pyle's just got the better, su the superior wrestling, the superior jiu-jitsu fundamentals, always in position. Waldberger couldn't do jack. None of those, you know, wild and crazy submission attempts were going anywhere on on Pyle. And it was also nice to see in the third round Pyle go for the finish. This is something we have been just desperate for recently, and it was nice to see a veteran like Pyle. I felt like this really saved the card. This was a pivotal moment. If he had coasted this a decision, the card would have been a lot less fun. But instead, he gritted it out and forced uh, forced a stoppage. Herb Dean really took his time and let Waldberger take quite a beating, which was probably pretty unnecessary. Um, so maybe the refs are part of the decision problem too, being slow to stop fights. But either way, good fight. I'd watch it as soon as you can. That brings us to the fight. Probably the most anticipated fight on the card, Roy Welterweight's Roy McDonald and Demian Maya, both coming off losses. McDonald coming off a loss to Robbie Lawler, Maya coming off a loss to Jake Shields. I would watch this one. I would go ahead and watch this one pretty pretty much now as well. Uh, Maya looked great in the first round. Was hitting him hard with some hooks. Got the takedown. Got got on. Got him down. Was light him up with ground and pound. Dominant position. Didn't really go for any killer subs, but was was beating him up on the ground with elbows and punches. And I thought maybe it would be enough uh, that McDonald would be diminished in the second round, but it was Maya who was diminished, and Maya wasn't setting his, up his shots well. And the second and third round was just a story of McDonald shrugging off uh, pretty bad uh, takedown attempts from Maya and then just beating him up. Now, the one thing that keeps this fight from being a real classic, I mean, I would give it three stars tops if I was still doing the star system, Maya takes off the takes off the gas now. Uh, he was more aggressive than he had been in some of his recent fights, but he's still not as aggressive as the Roy McDonald that first uh, came to the UFC. What Zane Simon pointed out to me last night was uh, he's charging in with combos, but he's pulling back so that by the time he gets to the third or fourth strike, uh, his his opponent's out of range. The old McDonald drove through and just poured it on, and uh, you know he beat up Maya for two solid rounds at the end of the fight, bloodied him up had him exhausted and, and beaten, and never went for the kill. Very frustrating. Not championship stuff. I, I really, something in the water at the TriStar gym uh, is the reason I call him the TriStall. Uh, it's too much Francis Carmont and not enough old Roy McDonald. Really annoying. Anyway, uh, that brings us to light heavyweight uh, Daniel Cormier's squash match against Patrick Cummins. Cummins, a last-minute substitute. Uh, fought pretty bravely, was just completely outclassed. I mean, might as well watch it now. It's only a minute 19. You can see what uh, Cormier can do to essentially a human punching bag or a, a sparring partner. And no, no insult meant to Cummins. He was just way in over his head. One week's training is not enough time to make your UFC debut and face one of the toughest guys in the light heavyweight and the heavyweight divisions. I mean, Cormier, excellent wrestler, incredible athlete. He looked really good at 205 pounds. Apparently had no trouble making the weight cut, which is good to hear because he, you know, he wrecked his kidneys. Uh, and the Peking Olympics, Beijing Olympics, God, uh, in 2008, trying to make the weight cut and didn't get to compete. So good to see that he's, you know, gradually lost his weight, and and he wasn't doing a massive water weight cut. He he had he had, he had melted off most of the weight 
uh, slow and steady, and then just does a small weight cut at the end to be ready for the fight. So I uh, look forward to seeing Cormier. Um, I don't know if that earns him a title shot, but 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 uh, I think they need to give him a title shot as soon as they can. I think he's more than ready uh, for John Jones. Anyway, and that brings us to Ronda Rousey and Sarah McMahon. This is another one. Watch it as soon as you can. Uh, I mean, it only lasted a minute six. Um, uh, Rousey uh, kind of surprised everybody by working uh, knees to the clinch. McMahon looked good. She was she was dominating the boxing exchanges such as they were. I mean, she, when she hit Rousey, it was clear that. Had she been able to keep Rousey off her and keep the fight at distance, I think she would beat the crap out of Rousey. But instead, she let Rousey get in on the clinch. Rousey's very dominant in the clinch and changed her game. Sarah McMahon was very ready uh, to fend off judo tosses. She was keeping her hips low. There was no way Rousey was going to get under her, get her weight under uh, underneath a McMahon. No way she was going to hoist her up on her hips. Instead... She just works knees to the body and, and drops her with a liver shot. Uh, the stoppage may have been a little quick, but McMahon went down hard from a liver shot, so I cannot blame Herb Dean at all for stopping this fight. Good performance from Rousey. A little disappointing. I was hoping for a little more from Sarah McMahon, but uh, no problem. I'm not going to complain about a quick fight uh, after so many long decisions. You know, uh, you know, the alternative to a five-round title fight being a one-minute six knockout Fine with me. We're more than due for some of that in MMA. So anyway, that's the Kid Nate Bathrobe Review. I'll be back next week. We'll be talking about UFC Macau. I can't even remember who's headlining that, but but it's happening March 1st. Um, and we'll, uh, it's Kim versus Hathaway. That's right. Stun Gun Kim versus John Hathaway. A mildly intriguing fight. Um, not a whole heck of a lot else on that card. Matt Mitrion and Sean Jordan. Uh, Hatsu Hiyoki and Ivan Minjavar, uh, some, some of the fights to look forward to. Anyway, we'll be back for that. That'll be happening early and be on Fight Pass, <clears throat> so it'll be an unusual time, but we'll cover all the usual stuff. I'll have the Eugene will be back with Knuckle Up tomorrow. We'll have a Care, Don't Care preview. Dallas and, and Zane and I will have the MMA Viva section going in depth, and maybe we'll do some bonus programs as well. So remember to like this video on YouTube. Give us a subscribe on MMA Nation so you can see this stuff live, like the lucky 14 viewers that are sharing Sunday morning with me right now. And, uh, and we'll be uh, back next week. Adios, MMA aficionados. This is Kid Nate signing off.